so the state auditor's report uh, revealed data doctoring in schools. You immediately suspended four principals. Do you think any more disciplinary action is going to be taken? Um, presently, um, counsel for the district is working with counsel for uh, the four administrators who were suspended, um, talking about the future. Um, there indeed could be more investigation that occurs. We are pouring through the data. Of course, the working papers that are associated with the state auditor's report, and we're corrobor corroborating. Ugh. We, we're looking at that in comparison to what our own internal auditor provided to understand if we need to dig deeper and if there would be disciplinary actions that were necessary. Um, you know, the state auditor's report talked about uh, the, this was the culture. It was a, a pervasive practice, and we've addressed that in 18 different ways through policies and procedures and sign-offs and strong, strong protocols that can, would ensure the community this could not happen again. So we're trying to face forward. Um, we will do what's necessary to reach backward and hold those accountable that we can hold accountable, but our focus is really on moving forward to ensure this community has confidence that this wouldn't occur again. And you're talking about rebuilding trust with the taxpayers. What about within the structure of the uh, school and the school system itself? I mean, there was a lot of uh, culture that whistleblowers uh, feel that they were um, disciplined. Um, and there's obviously going to be morale issues in that regard. How do you rebuild that? And, and we've been working hard on that. Um, I, I think most uh, of our faculty and staff would share that um, they believe we do have an open door policy. Um, there has been a superintendent suggestion box um, used broadly <laughs> since early on that I began with the district. And they're helping us to solve problems. But beyond that, they're helping us anticipate what could be concerns in the future. And to me, that's a good signal that trust is being restored. Um, I, I believe our staff know that I value them highly. And I value the collective intellect we have and ways that we can project what can be a brighter day for Columbus's future in their public schools. And um, so we take very seriously those suggestions. We do have a, a confidential whistleblower hotline now that's launched and we're educating staff on, or will be educating staff on how to utilize that tool if they're not comfortable uh, disclosing their identity whenever they want to share a concern. Um, so I think a number of things, again, we've had like 18 different things that are in place now that address some of those concerns that existed in the past. Um, you know, there are days where I get lots of email and people say they're so proud to be here and, and that it is a new day and that they're optimistic and they've, um, I think that was, um, it, it, it's something I have done in every district where I've served as um, the superintendent CEO is making the personal visit to each classroom mm -hmm. in the district and, and that took a long time here. We have a lot of classrooms, a lot of buildings, um, but again, it helps me to be able to put a name with a face, it helps them to be able to realize that I'm real and, and sincere in my interest in what they think and how we can improve. So I, I, I think it's accurate that it, it's built on relationships. Come down from the ivory tower. I've never believed in an ivory tower. In fact, in Dan Good's perfect world, there wouldn't be titles. And mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we just focus on what the work is and who has the best skill set and interest to make, to, to do that work. So how would you characterize morale now? What's your I, sense? I think there is, um, I, I would say prior to um, um, beginning the process of identifying schools for closure consolidation, um, it was, um, we were continuing to see an increase in the positive disposition internally and externally. Um, certainly the, the announcement of, of the first proposal of schools that would close or be consolidated um, created a new opportunity for us to learn how to work together, how to conflict appropriately. Um, that's not something typically in the Midwest we do well. Um, but I think we're learning and I think we've seen models of that, brilliant models of that, exhibited in particularly by students at our community meetings and also by faculty and staff and, and community members. We also continue to see those that need to grow in how they present um, their arguments, um, the, pull it, the, the points they wish for us to know. Um, so I, I don't see that as a step backwards. I just see it as a new learning opportunity for us to grow as an organization, to grow as a culture. This is a tough question, but I think it speaks to the, the trust issue that's on the minds of many taxpayers, parents. Do you think the superintendent's job had enough oversight and accountability from the previous administration? Well, that's, that's difficult for me to comment on. I, I, I wasn't here. Um, I didn't, um, there are different members of the board now than existed then. 
Um, um, so I, I really don't even know how to respond to that. I, I certainly feel a sense of accountability to my Board of Education. Um, I am their direct report, as is the treasurer, the CFO, and the internal auditor. Um, and I know this board is working diligently to ensure that their policy and whatever governance model they elect to use um, assures that they're in the loop and aware and have good accountability mechanisms in place. Um, but I don't want to wait for those policies or that governance structure. I want to make certain um, our board is always in the loop on the, the issues du jour. Um, for example, when, when we were talking earlier, um, if, if there's a, a fender bender with a bus, um, if there's a student um, taken to emergency services, um, if, if there's a, an incident at a building that would cause it to evacuate, um, I feel my obligation is to be certain that the board is aware of that so they don't see it first on, on your network um, or hear it over the scanner. Um, I just feel like uh, as the governance entity, th th they have a right and I have an obligation uh, to share that information. So did you make any changes to increase accountability, increase access uh, that you could see? Did you come in and say, you know, I think we could do better in this area or that area in terms of that? Um, I wouldn't take credit for that alone. We have made improvements, but again, I think it's a result of many people having a desire uh, to again be a model urban system um, to set new new policies and procedures that are revered as some of the best in the state, maybe even the nation. I was really pleased that in response to the data scandal, um, we um, drafted in, in cooperation with the state auditor's office new policies related to student attendance and withdrawals and enrollment. Um, and those have been lauded as some of the best of the best now. And so I think that's always our goal is to actually, as the capital cities, uh, public school system as the largest system in the state uh, to set the new standard, the higher standard. And it'll take a while, but we already have um, examples of where we're doing that in different places. Our central enrollment center, I, I think you will see uh, this spring, this summer, um, we've reimagined that central enrollment center. I think it'll be a good model for all districts on how you manage data more effectively uh, to ensure the fidelity of that data. Um, so I'm not going to let any more out about that one, but it's one you're going to watch. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Sorry. So now the uh, Columbus mayor has appointed a, an education czar. Sorry. And uh, <laughs> uh, Rhonda Johnson, how do you see that relationship working? You've got, you've got you and you've got the city, uh, you know, and keeping an eye on each other, and how do you see it working? You know what, Rhonda presently serves as the president of the Columbus Education Association, which is um, the bargaining unit that represents the certificate employees of the district. And Ron and I have had a very productive working relationship. In fact, I would say in all three districts where I've served as superintendent, um, we've been able to um, evolve that relationship so that it's more than just contractual enforcement, that again, we're focused on the future and anticipating what could be concerns and addressing them before they ever become concerns. I've been particularly delighted in our labor relations meetings that could occur frequently but have only been quarterly this year um, because we've committed to um, being forward thinking and, and looking at what, what would be best for the students in our community and their families and how can we work together to ensure that labor management relationship supports those best practices. So I use that as a context to say I think Rhonda will bring that same, I know Rhonda will bring that same level of professionalism to the director of education position in the mayor's shop. I've asked the, the board of education that she and I be permitted to sit together at board meetings so that we could um, 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 consult with each other um, to be certain we're either in sync or respectfully um, um, agree to maybe have a different percept or perspective presented to the board. But it's been a very respectful relationship. I have a high regard for Rhonda. I believe uh, most of her membership would feel likewise. And so I look forward to her serving in that capacity. You uh, say in your, your, your one year anniversary, uh, what would you think <laughs> would have to happen uh, between uh, now and then for the whole year for you to say, you know what, it's been a good year? What, what, are, you, what are you going to be looking at as sort of the, the, the benchmarks? You know, we've heard from our community that they want to be able to trust um, their elected governance body, the Board of Education and the administration that that governance body oversees. 
Um, they want to see students performing well in all schools, um, and particularly their neighborhood schools. Uh, they want to retain the school choice options. Um, so I th they want to be certain that the principals that, uh, and the teachers that they love and are productive in, in their schools are maintained in those schools. So those are the kinds of benchmarks I use for myself. If we're able to see movement toward and beyond those benchmarks that we've set, um, then I would entertain if the board wished to keep me for longer. Um, if we don't see movement in that direction, um, I've been very intentional in saying that I, I think a year at a time is fine. Um, I'm retired, and so for me, I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, I need to prove um, that my leadership is what's appropriate for Columbus at this time. And if I can't demonstrate that, then Columbus should elect different leadership in this, in this role. And I know it's not traditional for districts to only have one or two year contracts at a time but I don't care. <laughs> um, I think we need to break that mold and, and think about what's best for our city right now. Um, I, 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 want, I want to be the best for this city right now in their public school system. Um, and I'm, and, 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 um, so we'll see when, um, when we see the results of student achievement and if that confidence is restored and we're able to keep people in their buildings. Thanks for spending time with us, appreciate it. You're welcome.